Hello, boys and girls. This is Miss Gardner here. I am going to read the one and only Ivan, and I'll start now. One day, Helen came home with something large and flat wrapped in a brown paper. Look at what I bought today, she said excitedly as she tore off the paper. A painting to go over the living room couch. Fruit in a bowl, Max said with a shrug. Big deal. This is fine art. It's called a still life, Helen explained, and I think it's lovely. I dashed over to examine the painting, marveling at the colors and shapes. See, said Max's wife, Ivan likes it. Ivan likes to roll up poop and throw it at squirrels, Max said. I couldn't take my eyes off the apples and bananas and grapes in the picture. They look so real, so inviting, so edible. I reached out to touch a grape and Helen slapped my hand. Bad boy, Ivan, don't touch. She jerked her thumb at Mac. Honey, go get a hammer and a nail, would you? While Mac and Helen were busy in the living room, I wandered into the kitchen. A cake covered in thick chocolate frosting sat on the counter. I like cake. Love it, in fact. But it wasn't eating I was thinking about. It was painting. The frosting peaked and dipped like waves on a tiny pond. It looked rich and gooey, dark and smooth. It looked like mud. I scooped up a handful of frosting. I scooped up another. I headed to the refrigerator door. It was perfect, an empty white waiting canvas. The frosting wasn't as easy to work with as jungle mud. It was stickier and, of course, more tempting to eat. But I kept at it. I scraped off every last bit of that frosting. I may have eaten a little cake, too. I don't remember what I was trying to paint. A banana, most likely. I suppose I knew I was going to get in trouble. But at that moment, I just didn't care. I wanted to make something, anything, the way I used to. I wanted to be an artist again. I soon learned that humans can screech even louder than monkeys. After that, I was never allowed in the kitchen. Back in those days, the Big Top Mall was smaller. It had a pony ride, a wooden train that bustled around the parking lot. A few bedrilled parrots and a sturdy spider monkey. But when Mac brought me a baby gorilla dressed in a crisp tuxedo to the mall, everything changed. People came from far and wide to have their pictures taken with me. They brought me blocks and a toy guitar. They held me in their laps. Once I even held a baby in mine. She was small and slippery. Bubbles flowed from her lips. She squeezed my finger. Her rear was poofy with padding. Her legs bowed in like bent twigs. I made a face. She made a face. I grunted. She grunted. I was so afraid she would fall that I squeezed her tightly and her mother yanked her away. I wonder if my mother ever worried about dropping us. We always held on, but that's easier to do when your mother is furry. Human babies are an ugly lot, but their eyes are like our baby's eyes. Too big for their faces and for the world. One day, after many weeks of loud talking, Helen packed a bag and slammed the front door and never came back. I don't know why. I never know the why of humans. That night, I slept with Mac in his bed. My old nests were woven of leaves and sticks and shaped like his bathtub, cool green cocoons. Mac's bed, like mine, was flat, hot, without sticks or stars. Still, he made a sleeping sound like the rumble my father used to make when all was well, a sound from deep inside his belly. Mac grew sullen. I grew bigger. I became what I was meant to be, too large for chairs, too strong for hugs, and too big for human life. I tried to stay calm, to move with dignity. I did my best to eat daintily, but human ways are hard to learn, especially when you're not a human. 
When I saw my new domain, I was thrilled. And who wouldn't have been? It had no furniture to break, no glasses to smash, no toilets to drop Max keys into. It even had a tire swing. I was relieved to have my own place. Somehow I didn't realize I would be here quite so long. Now I drink Pepsi, eat old apples, and watch reruns on TV. But many days I forgot what I'm supposed to be. Am I a human? Am I a gorilla? Humans have so many words, more than they truly need. Still, they have no name for what I am. Ruby is finally asleep. I watch her chest raise and fall. Bob, too, is snoring, but my mind is still racing. For perhaps the first time ever, I've been remembering. It's an odd story to remember, I have to admit. My story has a strange shape, a stunted beginning, and an endless middle. I count all the days I've lived with humans. Gorillas count as well as anyone, although it's not a particularly useful skill to have in the wild. I've forgotten so many things, and yet I always know precisely how many days I've been in my domain. I take one of the magic markers Julia gave me. I make an X, a small one on my painted jungle wall. I make more X's and more. I make an X for every day of my life with humans. My marks look like this. The rest of the night, I mark the days, and when I am done, my wall looks like this. And so on until there are 9,876 X's marching across my wall like a parade of ugly insects.